Can we be honest for a moment? Don't we all have that one thing that we hate about ourselves? And if we could change it tomorrow, we would. We can hide from it, some of us avoid it, or be silenced by it. But what if I told you we're to love it? Hi, my name is Ryan Nicewinder, and my idea is loving what we hate about ourselves unlocks untapped potential. You see, freedom and space open up on the other side of the things that we hate. Now, hate may be a strong word. You may be saying that about like when I'm talking, but what I mean by hate, and I think it's important to define it, is it's that thing you pray no one finds out about, that you hold so close to your chest with fear that if someone were to find out about it, they would reject you. Now, when I was 14 years old, I wore these things. You might have heard of them before. They're called cargo pants. <laughs> yeah, you laugh, but at the time they were cool and wearing shorts that went below your knees at the time was fashionable. <laughs> but I didn't wear cargo shorts because they were cool, fashionable, or had plenty of pocket space for all my favorite snacks. I wore them because I can stand up, and when I stand up, I wear leg braces, and I didn't want other people to see my leg braces. I spent so much time, energy, and effort trying to hide the thing that was in plain sight, the thing that I hated the most. My family and I, we would take a trip to Washington, D.C., and when I was eight years old, we were there seeing the White House, the Smithsonian, uh, all the great sights. And as we're going from place to place, most eight-year-olds at the time are walking next to their parents. Insert Ryan, not normal eight-year-old. And I hadn't gotten a wheelchair yet, so I was getting pushed in a stroller. Now, my aunt was pushing me, and we're taking in all the sights. I can't believe that the President of the United States is an eight-year-old. I'm like, he lives in that huge house all by himself? Um, but as we were taking in these sights, this lady walks up to us, and she looks down at me, she looks at my aunt, she looks back down at me, and she says, isn't he a cute baby? <laughs> I'm like, I look up, I'm like, I'm a grown man, come on. <laughs> for real though, we laugh about it to this day. But I think for the first time in my life, someone was inadvertently saying, you're different than most people. And that really bothered me. And for the next 15 years, I had a full-time job trying to hide the thing that I hated most about myself. Now, as we get to the middle school years, how many of us know that we become a little bit more self-aware? <laughs> as I was walking the halls, I noticed everybody else was walking and I was using a chair looking up at everybody. And so I decided I'm gonna walk too. Now, my school had just bought me a new wheelchair, but I wanted nothing to do with that. It was super kind of them, but wanted nothing to do with that. And so I decided for the next five years, I'm gonna walk. Now, I would tell people that I just wanted the exercise, which I didn't, or it was just easier for me to walk, which in hindsight, it probably wasn't. And I found that I was running away from the thing that I hated the most. You know, we're told to toughen up, overcome, fight through, but I believe we're supposed to sit in, embrace, and normalize. For the first 21 years of my life, I was running away from the thing that I hated rather than embracing sitting in and starting to love the thing that I hate the most. All right, I need some audience participation. How many of you have ever seen a scary movie before? Raise your hand. Okay, we got some people. You're gonna be able to relate to this one then. So the first time you watch a scary movie, you're on the edge of your seat. Some of you are covering your eyes and I know we have a couple people in here that are too cool for school and they're acting like it's not scary, but we know it's scary. That scary scene comes and you're surprised, you're nervous, and your heart's beating out of your chest anticipating what might come. This happens every time you watch a scary movie for the first time. But what if your friend comes along the next day and asks you to watch the same movie again? You're kind, and so you say, sure, I'll watch it again. This time, that scary scene comes, but it's not as scary. Over the next month, you start watching this movie three, four, five times. And by the fifth time, when that scary scene comes, 
it's just not scary. Why? What's changed? What's changed is this. You've normalized what once scared you, and you've disarmed the very thing that you once feared. You see, the scene didn't change. You did. And I would argue that that's true in our lives. You see, my disability won't change. Your ethnicity doesn't change. Your height won't change. That smile of yours, probably not going to change. But you change. And the key is, as you watch that scary scene in your real life, you change. Now, I'm so passionate about this topic because when we start to embrace and normalize and love the thing that we hate most about ourselves, it no longer weighs us down, has the same impact on us, or can dictate who we become. There was a season in my life where I would call it the lowest season. I was struggling with dating. I was struggling with, would I be able to provide for the woman that I married one day? All these thoughts. It's amazing where our brains can go, right, when we let them. And simultaneously, I was trying out for a senior men's national team. We were in Savannah, Georgia, four-day training camp, and I liked my chances of making this team. At the end of the four days, coach comes before the last training session, and he says, hey, I'm going to give you the night session off. We're on an army base. Don't leave the army base. Don't drink. We'll see you in the morning, and we'll, cut the, we'll make the cuts. What do we do? Some girls come up. They ask us to go out for a drink. A lot of you are laughing because you know what I'm talking about. And insecure Ryan decides that he's going to go because someone's showing him a little attention. I go with my, my friends. We go out. We come back the next day. We get caught. Four guys need to get cut. The four of us get cut. And you see, insecurities started to lead to doubt. And doubt started to lead to lack of confidence. And I started to find myself in a place where over the next two years, I was cut from the national team and missed the Rio Paralympic Games. After the Rio Paralympic Games, I entered into a season, and I would call it my desert season. What I mean by that is it's you, it's only you, and you have to deal with all of you. I had recently graduated from the University of Illinois in Urbana-Champaign, and all my friends that were in college with me scattered across the country to take various jobs, while I took a job in Champaign. And it was during this season that I was forced to sit in my real life scary scene. And as I sat in that scary scene, the view of how I saw myself changed. You see, the circumstance didn't change. I still have my disability, but how I saw myself changed. I started to grow in confidence. And as I started to grow in confidence, I started to see my disability as an asset. Now, I want to make this really clear. I believe that when we start to see and love the things that we hate and start to see them as our greatest assets and strengths, this is a key indicator to knowing that we're starting to love the things that we hate the most. Following this, I started to gain confidence and pursue my dreams and reach my untapped potential. Over the next three years, I remade the senior men's national team. I got married to the love of my life and I became a Paralympic gold medalist in the Tokyo Paralympic Games in 2020. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> now, those are awesome accomplishments, I'm not gonna lie. But what I want us to focus on is this. All of those things were on the other side of the thing that I hated the most about myself. And this epiphany and this revelation to me brings me to my final thought of the day, what would it unlock for you? Would it be time, energy, opportunity? I don't know. But what I do know is that when we love the things that we hate most about ourselves, freedom and space open up and we're able to step in to our untapped potential. Thank you. <laughs>